When you receive your Bison Deepwell hand pump, it'll come in two boxes. One cardboard box will house the cylinder, the paddle, the rope, the instruction sheet, and the rod retrieval tool. The other box will be an eight foot long box that will have the pipe and rod inside. So the first thing that you should do when you receive your kit is to open the boxes, lay things out, not on the ground. We don't want to lay this nice clean pipe and, and cylinder on, on the dirty ground. We want to set it on a nice clean, this is on a picnic table here that we've put a cover on. You can put it on a piece of plywood on the ground with a, a tarp over it or just a tarp on the ground. But th the point is don't lay this pipe and rod in the cylinder onto the ground. Because keeping in mind, we're going to put all this stuff down inside your well, your drinking water. And we don't want to introduce any sort of contamination to that drinking water. So when you open up your kit, you'll, you'll count. Make sure you get all the pipe and rod that you're supposed to get. You'll notice that the pipe and rod, the pipe comes with these little plastic caps. Those are just thread protectors. There'll be one on the inside and you'll just pop that out. Those just get discarded. Just throw them away. Your cylinder will come already taped and, and safety rope tied to it. You'll get an installation paddle. You'll get a complete set of instructions that will have your name on it. The serial number of the pump that you bought will be on that set of instructions. Also in your kit you will receive the pump head. This is the portion that will mount on top of the well casing when you com to complete your installation. The next step to our deep well installation is to install the three inch stainless steel pump cylinder onto the first length of pipe and rod, the first eight foot length of pipe and rod. So the first thing that you should do is to just, you just tap the end of this T-handle and the rod will free up, pump this back and forth, and you can hear the check valves popping inside, so you know they're functioning properly. Now we can just unhook, unscrew the T, plastic T-handle, and that no longer is needed. Inside the cylinder is a little red plastic shipping plug. Just remove that and discard. We don't need that anymore. You'll also notice that your pipe comes with a plastic thread protector. You're just going to pop that off the end of the pipe and then just throw it away. The Teflon tape has already been applied to the, to the male threads of this pipe, so you don't need to put any more Teflon tape on. Inside the pipe is the 3 8 stainless steel rod. This is our first connection. So now it's easier if you have somebody to help you. I'll have John give me a hand. This is, this is the two person job. I'm going to hold the cylinder and we're going to tighten those together securely. This will actually lock the two pieces of rod together. Those two ends of the rod have now butted against each other. Then we'll tighten the 9 16 jam nut to the coupling using a half inch wrench on the coupling, a 9 16 on the jam nut and securely tighten those together. Okay, now the rod's connected. We're going to slide the PVC pipe over the rod into the end of the 3 inch cylinder and screw it in by hand. Again, there's no real reason to put pliers on this or pipe wrenches. Screw everything securely by hand. If for a comfort level, if you want to give one quarter turn with a pair of pliers, that's fine. Just put a pair of pliers on the pipe, hold the cylinder rigidly, and give it one quarter turn. That's good. It's tight. One of the questions that we're going to ask you before you order your Bison Deepwell hand pump is what is your static water level? Static water level is clearly defined as the distance from the top of the ground down to the top of the water in your well. So in order to measure that, you need some string and a, and a weight tied to the end of that string. Typically, most well casings look like this, and they'll have this style of well cap on the top. We always recommend, if you have an electric pump in the well, shut the power off, shut the electricity off to your electric pump. And then, with a wrench or a pair of pliers, you can loosen up these set screws on the side of the cap and just simply lift the cap off and set it off to the side. So now I'm going to take my string that has a weight tied to it and I'm going to lower it down in the well. Trying to stay close off to one side. 
You don't want to get tangled up in any of the wires or piping that's down in there. So we're going to continue to lower that down in. There. I just heard it plop through the water. So I'm going to pick it up again. There. I heard it plop through the water again. So now I'll set my string aside. I'm just going to tie a knot right here. Because that's my static level. That's the top of the water. Now I can pull the string out, just lower this down, pull the string all the way out, and I'll just stretch this out on the ground, all the way up to my knot that I tied in the string. I'm just going to take a tape measure, and I can measure the length of the string. This particular well has a 12 foot static. So we have a 12 foot static here. If we go down another 20 feet, that's 32 feet. So I'm going to probably suggest that we use five lengths of pipe and rod. That'll put us at 40 feet. The first thing we want to do is we're going to have John tie off the safety rope, the other end of the safety rope, on around your casing. We want to make sure that this is our backup. In case you should lose your grip while you're installing the pump, we don't want to lose all that stuff down in the well. So now your safety rope is tied off, ready to begin the installation. As we discussed when we started the installation, you would have already turned the electricity off to your electric pump. So we're just going to pull these wires up out of the way. This is the safety rope that the electric pump is secured to. So we're going to take that off and just tie it off around the casing so we don't lose that. Not every electric pump installation has a safety rope, but this particular one does. It's always a good idea to, before you start, look down inside the casing and see where that pitless adapter is. It's, it's very visible. If you can't see it, shine a light and you will see it. So when you, you gotta see the empty space, the, the hole you're shooting for to pass that cylinder down through. It becomes very obvious. So we can see where we're headed. Now we're gonna go get our first piece of pipe and rod and cylinder and start lowering it in the hole. Now we're gonna begin the installation. We're gonna pass the cylinder and our first length of pipe and rod down. Have your installation paddle ready so that when we get it down there, we'll be able to slide the paddle over. John's going to fish it down by the pitless adapter. There it goes. And we're going to slide the paddle on top of the casing with the rope in the slot. Slide it down until the hub sits on the paddle. There we are. You'll notice that we had to find the sweet spot, find the spot where the cylinder would go by the pitless adapter easily. Be careful that you don't drive the pipe and cylinder down by the pitless. We don't want to damage anything. It might get caught a little bit the first time, pull it back up, restart. You'll find the spot, just slide it by the cylinder, then you're good to go. The rest of it is all inch and a quarter pipe. That'll go by the pitless adapter very easily. The next step after we get our first length of pipe and rod is to take your rod retrieval tool if you look down inside the pipe, you'll see the rod. So we're going to insert the rod retrieval tool down inside. We're going to find the piece of pipe, and we're just going to screw this on. You can just screw it on until it stops. Now John's going to give me a hand. He's going to hold on to the pipe. I'm going to lift up on the rod. All the way up. There it is. John will take the vice grips. He'll grip the rod with the vice grips. Now it's held in place. The vice grips are sitting right on top of this bell. I can unscrew the rod retrieval tool and we're just going to set it down here on the ground beside the well casing because we'll need it again. Depending on your static water level and the number of pipes, lengths of pipe and rod that you receive will determine how many times you have to do this. So we have, we're going to get our next eight foot piece of pipe and rod. We're going to screw it together and just start lowering it down the hole. This particular installation is going to use five lengths of pipe and rod. Your kit may take 10 lengths of pipe and rod, but they all go together the same way. Before we 
put that last length of pipe and rod down in the well, we've got to drill our little eighth inch bleed hole. Now this is a step that is done only if you live in a cold climate because we don't want this pipe and pump head to stay full of water because it will freeze. If you're in Florida, you can choose not to drill the eighth inch hole. So we're gonna drill the eighth inch hole. Pull the drill out, wipe away the excess, and now you have your eighth inch bleed hole. It will make the bison deep well pump frost free. Okay, now we have all of the pipe and rod installed. And if you did buy the vandal proof kit, I want to show you how that goes together. You've already drilled the holes for the vandal proof kit. We have these little rubber plugs that will now be inserted. So the first thing we got to do is take the rubber plug. John will put a little bit of silicone around that for us. Just around that underside edge. Doesn't take very much, just a little bit. This is going to complement the water tightness of the well seal. We don't want any holes. Okay, so I'm just going to take that and I'm going to push it in the hole. There it is. You can leave the excess, that's not going to hurt a thing. Maybe kind of grout it off a little bit. There's your first plug. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Our last step here is to install the bison deep well head. The first thing we need to do is remove this shoulder bolt that's in the top of the handle. That requires a 3 16 Allen wrench and a half inch box end wrench. So I suggest that you just install the bolt through the hole just so we don't lose it. Just slide it in there, put it on hand tight. Great. There. Now we're ready to assemble the pump head onto the rod and pipe. This always requires two people right here, somebody to hold just the weight of the pump head and another person to screw the coupling on and tighten the nuts. Now he's tightening up the jam nut with the half inch and nine sixteenths inch wrenches. Those are good and solid. So John's going to remove the vice grips. Now I have the weight of the rod in my hands and the pump head. I'm going to lower this down. John will line me up. There, I'm lined up in the pipe. Now I'm going to turn this clockwise to screw the pump head into the piping. I would caution you not to screw it too tight. You've got quite a bit of leverage here. You can hang on to the spout and hang on to the handle. I've got more leverage than John has with the wrench, so I just want to make sure it turns in snug. These threads are cut very tight, so they, th they seal up very nicely. There, now we're all connected. That's as far as we need to go. The next step is to tie the safety ropes on the eye bolt that's underneath the well cap. There's a quarter inch eye bolt right underneath the cap. We have two ropes in this installation because one of our safety ropes that John's tying right now, that's the submersible, the electric submersible pump. The blue and white rope is our hand pump safety rope. So we'll tie both of those ropes to that quarter inch eye bolt. Now that we have our rope secured, we're going to lift up on the weight of this, remove the paddle, and John's going to push all those wires and ropes down inside the casing. So I'm going to lift the weight, I'm going to remove the paddle, set that down, we're done with that. John will push all of the rope and the wires back down inside. This is a step that you want to do fairly quickly. This isn't too heavy, but sometimes if you've got 10 or 12 lengths, it weighs a little bit more. So the guy holding the pump is going to push the guy pushing the rope a little bit higher. Now, as you lower this down, Remember your little rubber bumpers, the little rubber plugs that you put in here. Just go slowly so you don't curl those plugs over. It's a pretty tight fit. They will go. The pump is sitting down securely on top of the casing now. You find the holes on the pump on the truss head bolt and just turn it in. Keeping in mind, there's no reason to turn hard on this bolt. We just want to snug it up. So I'm going to turn it in there until it comes up against the inside face of the truss head. There it is. Okay, the next step is to reattach the handle to the lift rod. As you're looking at your lift rod, there's a set screw on the back side of this eyelet. Make sure that set screw is pointing towards the handle. That's where we want that. So we're gonna take the bolt out. Remove that. I'll raise the handle up. 
line it up with the hole in the eyelet. We're going to push the bolt back through until it bottoms out. And then we're going to attach the nut to the back side. Tighten the bolt, turning the wrench clockwise, just enough so it, fits, it bottoms out on the side of the handle. Don't tighten it too tight. If you tighten it too tight, you won't be able to move the handle. That attaches, that reattaches the handle to your lift rod. The next step is to tighten these four nuts on top of the well adapter. When you tighten these, there's a plate underneath and there's a gasket between the two. So as we tighten this up, it's going to pull the plate up. It'll squish the gasket on the interior walls of the well casing. That's where we get our watertight well seal. So it's important that we do this diagonally. So we're going to start with this nut. I'm just going to get it started until it starts to show a little resistance. I can do most of it by hand. Okay, now I'm going to go to the one directly opposite from it. Tight, pretty good. I'm going to step over to this one. That we can do by hand until we get it down to the top of the plate. Okay, now we're going to go back to where we started. You can notice each time I tighten, one stud rises. That's because we're compressing that gasket. Okay, I'm going to go back to the opposite side again and just keep working my way around the perimeter, going diagonally every time that we want to tighten the nut. Be careful that we don't over tighten these nuts. We don't want to over tighten them. Just, just get them till they're snug. You'll know that one's tight. That one's tight. We're good. You can tell your pump is good and solid. Okay, the next step after we've tightened the nuts on the top, we're going to tighten up these set screws on the side of the casing. Turn them in by hand until you feel them stop up against the casing. Then with a 3 8 opened end wrench, we're just going to snug those up until they're solid against the casing. Again, going opposite side. So every time we tighten a nut, we want to go diagonal. This is your last step of the installation of your Bison Deepwell hand pump. In your kit, you will receive this little packet of rubber bumpers. They're a little longer than they need to be. So if you just hold it up against the side of the casing, just mark it with your finger and with a pair of scissors, you can just trim the piece off like that. And then it just pushes over the head of the bolt, slides on, and there you have it. You can do that to all four nuts and you're done. Now your installation is complete, so we're going to pump some water. You'll notice that your pump comes with this brass cap on the outlet of the spout. Make sure you remove that. So we're going to pump it about two or three times. You're ready to pump water with your Bison Deepwell hand pump. One thing to remember, if you're in a cold climate and you've taken your cap off, you're done pumping water, wait three or four minutes before you put the cap back on. If you put the cap back on too quick, it's going to pull a vacuum and all the water won't drain out of the pipe. So make sure you give it a couple, three minutes to drain out then put your cap back on. 